Hey, I'm Frans Nauta. I'm the founder of Climate Launchpad and also referred to as DaBoss. And I'm going to talk with you about the why question. Why do a startup? And for that, we start with the founder's dream. The reason is quite simple, because if you want to do a startup, it's incredibly hard. So you need a really big dream that is really attractive to make sure you get through all the hardship. Because let's look at it realistically. The next seven years, you will work 70 hours per week, even during your holidays. Assuming that you are a great success, of course. And then you probably have a company of maybe 500 employees. And you've got hundreds of happy customers. And you've got lots of climate impact. And you even make a profit. Sounds pretty awesome, right? On your way to get there, it's not going to be easy. You will face financial disaster. And in this case, you will overcome it. You will probably have to fire about 50 people. Have you ever fired someone? It's the worst. You will struggle with investors who will have unrealistic expectations of what you will deliver. You will struggle with your customers because they want to have their products way too early at way too low prices. And you will, everybody will look at you for decisions and guidance. You are a problem solving machine 24 seven and nobody will say thank you. And this is just the best case scenario. I didn't even talk about potential founder conflicts or a large corporation suing you for breach of their intellectual property or you start up crashing down because you run out of money. Worst of all, your lover ending the relationship that you have because they think that you are too consumed by your obsession for your startup and your founder's dream. It's pretty awful, right? So why don't you write down your founder's dream again in like three sentences and discuss it in the group with another founder? Is your dream big enough to pull you through all this hardship? Do you really, really want it that badly? So how did that go? Did your founder dream evolve since the bootcamp? If there's one advice I can give you, don't underestimate how hard a startup is. So the next question we will look at is whether a startup is actually the best tool for you to realize your dream. Because let's say you want to have a really, really huge impact on climate change, really huge. What would be the best tool? I mean, you could do a startup, but you could also work at Greenpeace and advocate for climate change. You could work in government designing policies that can have a really meaningful impact on climate change. You could go into politics, try to become a member of parliament or in your local city council and fight for good policies there. You could even work at a large corporation and develop a sustainability policy that trickles down their whole supply chain. And that is, can also be a way to have a really great impact on climate change. So you've got many good options if you want to do something about climate change. So why choose a startup? Why don't you make a list of what you think are pros and cons of doing a startup? Take about five minutes for that. So let's talk about what a startup really is. In our definition, it is a temporary organization designed to search for a repeatable and scalable business model. Let me repeat that. It's a temporary organization designed to search for a repeatable and scalable business model. So let's break it down. It's a temporary organization. The goal is not to stay a startup. The goal is to grow a big company and the startup is just step one of that. It's designed to search for a repeatable and scalable business model. What does that mean? Well, repeatable means we want more than one customer. We want impact. We want thousands of customers. So you need to find a group of customers that is big enough. And scalable means the more business you do, the more value you add for your customers and the lower your cost per customer get. So it's not about consulting because then the costs sort of stay constant with the growth of the company. No, we want scalable.
So you should see a startup as an experiment, as testing a hypothesis. You have an idea about a market and you have an idea about the customer. And you go into the market to test your hypothesis. And by the way, most founders at the beginning of the startup have a pretty clear idea who that customer will be and what the market will be. And as it turns out, they are almost always wrong. You decide who you work with, and that is a big one. Life really is too short to work with assholes, isn't it? It's also incredibly dis exciting to be 100% responsible. I mean, it's pretty black and white. If you fail, it's your failure. If it's a success, it's your success. In any large organization, that is really different. Startups are also a roller coaster with incredibly high highs and incredibly low lows. But the cool thing is, you will never be bored. You will also learn more than you can imagine. Because you can only do a few things really well. Most of us can do three, maybe four things really well. But you need many other skills. So you will learn what you're really good at and then you will learn to be humble about those other things and hire people who can do that much better than you. The reward is also great, you know? You can work on saving the planet and make a living. Now, how cool is that? And then lastly for me, is really a big one is speed. In a startup you can move 100 times faster than any government policy or any corporate policy on sustainability. It's a big deal. But it's not only good news of course. The pros come with cons. The first for me is the lack of resources. I mean there's no R&D projects longer than two months in a startup really. No corporate credit cards, no corporate cars, you know? You're trying to achieve something really big with way too little resources. The second is risk. It's one of the riskiest things to do a startup. I mean, yes, as a politician, you can lose your job, but it doesn't come with a financial risk. And in corporations or government jobs, much less risk. There's also a constant lack of information. You have to get used to making decisions on Sketchy data that is incomplete and you don't have the time to get more data, nor the money to get more data. So you better get used to betting your firm on really sketchy data. It's not for everybody. Are you still with me? Good. Let's talk about a sensitive subject that we often run into in Climate Kick. It's about money. Because most founders in our programs are not in it for the money. They want to have impact on the planet. Which is great, I mean, for me it's the same. However, if you don't make money in your startup, we call you a hobby. Might be a great hobby, but in order to scale your hobby into something meaningful, you need money and then it becomes a business. So look at Amazon. They've got a profitable business model. They never gave that profit to the shareholders yet, because they never uh, reported a profit but they use all that money to scale the business and that's what we want. So the difference between a hobby and a scalable business with impact is making money. Better get used to it. Let's talk about another issue that we often run into with idealistic startups. They sometimes mix up who they work for. You see this lady? This is Polly the polar bear. What's the problem here? Why don't you think about that for a few seconds? What's the problem here? Now you probably think that the problem here is that it really sucks to be a polar bear in the 21st century because of climate change, da di da di da well, you're wrong. That's not the problem here. The problem is that Polly doesn't have any money to be your customer. So don't waste your time talking about Polly. Focus on customer pain. If you can find enough customers that have pain, you can solve their problems, you will build a big company, and you will have a huge impact. And only then you can start talking about Polly. 
So after these exercises, you should have a better answer to the question, why do a startup? And we've discussed some related issues like your big, hairy, audacious founder dream and how you should not focus on poly, but focus on customers and how it should be work and not a hobby. So here's my closing thought for you. A startup is like jumping off a cliff and assembling the plane on the way down. And what we do for you in Climate Launchpad and later on in the Climate Kick Accelerator is that we help you develop the skills and the tools to be able to assemble the plane as you go down so you don't hit the ground but actually take off and build a beautiful scalable startup. But assembling the plane is not our work, it's your work. So the question is, are you up to it?